Good morning, my brothers and my sisters. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank God for you today. We thank God for you joining again with us. We hope and pray that as we go through our worship this morning, that you are moved by the Holy Spirit. We want to stop and say thank you to each and every one for last week and the weeks before. And we want to wish every mother, every grandmother, every uh, matriarch, every sister, auntie, godmother, if you've stepped in the gap to be a mother to somebody, we want to wish you a happy Mother's Day. We are grateful today, and we thank God for this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. And so again, today we come, and we want to give God all our glory. We want to give God all of our praise. Doesn't matter whether you're by yourself or you're with somebody else. You ought to lift your hands. You ought to lift your voice. You ought to do whatever you can to show God your glory and your honor. Amen. We thank God today that in this opportunity, we're going to again try to sing. It's going to be a melody of songs. And after we have gone through songs, we're going to come back with our scripture. And then we're coming in prayer. We thank God for First Lady Sharon Allen, who's going to come and lead us this morning on Mother's Day in prayer. Amen. So again, I think you know some of the songs. We're going to bounce through them. I'm going to do the best I can to give God glory on my end, and you do the best that you can on your side. Amen. At the cross where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away, it was there by faith I received my sight, and now I am happy all the day. Draw drops of grief can never repay the debt of love I owe. Here, Lord, I give myself away. Tis all that I can do. Well, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Well, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Down at the cross where my Savior died Down where from cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart was the blood applied Singing glory to his name Oh, singing glory to his name, bless his name, singing glory to his name, precious name. Here I said, there to my heart was the blood of Christ, singing glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides 
within there at the cross where he took me in singing glory to his name oh singing glory to his name precious name singing glory to his name precious name here now there to my heart was the blood applied singing glory to his name oh singing glory to his name precious name singing glory to his name precious name said now there to my heart was a blood applied singing glory to his name oh singing glory to his name precious name singing glory to his name precious name and now there to my heart was the blood applied singing glory to his name power power wonder working power in the blood of the land oh there is power power a wonder working power in the precious blood of the lamb oh there is power power a wonder working power in the blood in the blood of the lamb of the lamb there is power power a wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen, amen, amen. We know that there is blood in the power. We know that there is power in the blood. And we know the power and the blood comes from Jesus. Amen. We thank God again for those that have joined us. This morning, we want to go back into uh, the scriptures. We want to go to John, and we want to go back to that 21st verse, John 21. Amen? And we want to be able, in the midst of it, to go and to look and to see that which the Lord has placed there. We want to be ready, and we want to be able that in the midst of it, that as we prepare ourselves to go into the word, that we take our time and go through it and to look at each and every word that is being said. And so again, we want to be able that in the midst of it, that we want to lift up the word from John 21 and we want to start at verse 20. These words, then Peter turned about saith the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is, is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is it that, that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that the disciple would not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it that to thee? This is the disciple which testifieth that these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. 
And there are also many other things which Jesus did, that which, if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. We ask now the First Lady Sharon should come and lead us in prayer. Again, we want to turn our minds, our hearts, and our thoughts towards heaven. Amen. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Eternal Father, thou who are the creator and maker of all things, we are humble this morning as we say thank you, Lord. We thank you for another day's journey. We thank you for waking us this morning, for allowing us to begin this journey you call today. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have blessed us with and for all that you continue to bless us with. We thank you most of all, Lord, for the technology that allows us to reach out and to touch those who we can't sit next to in our church pews anymore. We thank you, Lord, for blessing those who are mothers, those who step in for mothers, those who call themselves mothers. We thank you, Lord, for the things that they have done. For honor is due to all those who have stood in these steps. I ask Heavenly Father a special blessing today on those who have lost a mother. For that grief can't be filled with words or with flowers. Bless them, Lord, and touch them. For some of us, this is the first time that they're going to go through Mother's Day without a mother. For some of us, this is going to be the first time or maybe the hundredth time. We don't know, Lord. But you know and you'll comfort them. You'll, bring, you'll be a comforter to those who have no mother standing with them today. We ask, Lord, that you would continue to bless this little church called Pilgrim. We ask that you would continue to look out over all the things that we have done and continue to do in your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Amen. We thank First Lady for that prayer. We ask God that he would hear our prayers and then open up that window and cause us to be able to be blessed somehow and in some way. Amen. We're going to, again, we're going to attempt another song. And as we go, you all know it. It's one of the songs that we sing. It is it will never lose its power. The blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. And as we sing through this, sing to the glory of God. Amen. Never 
to the message for this morning. Then Peter, turning about, seeth the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, which also leaned on Peter, seeing him, saith to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is it that, that to thee? Follow thou me. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that the disciples should not die. Yet Jesus said not unto him, he shall not die. But if I will that he tarry till I come, what is it that to thee? This is the disciple which testified of these things and wrote these things and will know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that it should be written. Amen. I want to look at the first few verses there. Then Peter, turning about, saith the disciple whom Jesus loved, following, which also leaned on his breast at supper, and said, Lord, which is he that betrayeth thee? Peter, seeing him, saith to the Lord, And what shall this man do? And Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what is it that to thee? Follow me. This morning I want to talk from this subject matter. Your job is to follow Jesus. Your job is is to follow Jesus. My brothers and my sisters, last week we talked about how deep your love is for Jesus. And with that, there came the challenge for each of us to look within our own self, to see where our love stands for and with Jesus. Many of you have experienced when you don't do or go the way some people want you to go, they dump you on the other side of the curve. There is a, another deep challenge that I want to place within your grasp. That is very important for us to know what it is that Jesus wants us to do. This challenge that is placed in front of us every day every hour, and every moment. That is to follow Jesus. Sometimes we become conflicted because we are more concerned about what others are doing and where they're going. We need to be more concerned with doing our job, which is following Jesus where he leads us, where he directs us, 
and where he appoints us to go. When we are watching and paying attention to what everybody else is doing, we have taken our eyes and our attention off of Jesus. You can't be doing what you're supposed to do if you're watching what everybody else is doing. You can't be fulfilling that which he has directed you or appointed you to do because your attention is not on that work, but it's on somebody else's work. I know somebody out there is saying amen right now. There are too many people that are busybodies in the church and out of the church worrying about what everybody else is doing instead of being focused on what they're supposed to do. Wondering why he has given direction to others or he has called others to do something different from you. Really, you should understand that whatever he gives to somebody else to do, that's their job to do. And it's not your job, but if you're following Jesus, he'll give you work to do. If you're following Jesus, he'll lead you in the direction he wants you to go. Somebody is saying, how do you know? When the Lord is doing the leading, uh, when he is sending forth uh, you to go and do, uh, when he sends forth a true and clear message, uh, it lets you know, but it lets everybody else around you know that Jesus is leading you in the direction. My brothers and my sisters, if we're more focused on Jesus, we're not worrying about where others are going, but we're worried about where we're going. You need not look at the direction that somebody else is going because they're going in a destination that Jesus is leading them to. Uh, we cannot allow anything to break our following of Jesus. I thank God that in the midst of it, people were so concerned about us having church service, but over the last month and a half, we've been giving God glory. We've been giving God honor. We've been giving him praise. We've been lifting him up over through the internet and every chance we get by emails and texting and all of the other things, people are lifting him up and we ought to be encouraged to know that the church is live and well. Oh yes, the buildings are still standing, but if the building fell, we are still going to have church because if we give him glory, we give him honor, we give him praise, we are the church. Can I get an amen on that one? Yes, following Jesus in the midst of it, we ought to keep all focus and attention on him. He says, follow me, which is an imperative command and is a present tense order. He doesn't say just follow me yesterday or last year. He doesn't say follow me tomorrow. He says follow me, which is a present sense. We must follow him. When we come to our senses in the morning and we get up out of our beds, we ought to have our minds made up that we're going to follow Jesus. Or let me tell you that in the midst of it, whatever comes your way, Jesus is already prepared to handle it. He's already going to equip you to be able to overcome whatever obstacles. All you got to do is call on his name and watch and see won't Satan leave you alone. Watch and see won't those obstacles get out your way. Listen to me. It's a present sense tense. Keep on following me. Don't, don't get caught up with what's going on, don't, don't worry so much. All you got to do is follow Jesus. When we look at the text here, we find at the end of that 19th verse, he, he stops and he does something. He says to Peter and those that are around him, he says these words, follow me. Oh, look at this, that in the midst of it, we find that Jesus starts out telling them, don't get yourself caught up with everybody else and what everybody else is doing. He simply says, follow me. But, but in the verses after he begins to explain, I become a little deeper into this. It is in the following verse that we find exactly what Jesus is talking about. Uh, Peter turns his attention from Jesus and turns it to John. He's not following Jesus when Jesus 
simply in the midst says, follow me in the 19th verse. P Peter gets caught up with the fact that John is coming with him. My, my brothers and my sisters, if we live right, if we do right, if we walk right, talk right, do all the things right, we all going to go to heaven. And my brothers and my sisters, don't be surprised who you see up there. Because the truth of the matter is, sometimes in the church, everybody that says, Lord, Lord, ain't going to heaven. Mm -hmm. But I want to tell you today that if you keep your mind focused and you keep your eyes on Jesus and you follow him, you won't have to worry about who's going to get there. You need to be more concerned if you're going to get there. Yes, in the midst of it, Peter takes his attention from Jesus and he turns it over to John. The description that Peter gives out. The description of this is the disciple John. Uh, this is a deflection of a personal challenge by Jesus to follow him, and yet Peter finds a way to deflect it. I, I need to stop and, and put a quarter in the meter. I need to be here for just a few moments. My brothers and my sisters, stop for deflecting what it is that the Lord wants you to do. Stop saying it's somebody else's job. If he touches your heart, touches your mind, touches your soul, it's your job to let somebody know that Jesus is able. It's your job to let somebody know to the utmost Jesus say. It's your job to tell somebody he'll put food on your table and then go in your cupboard and share some food. It's your job to tell them that, that he'll put clothes on your back. Go into the closet. Go into all those storage bins and take those clothes out and share them. You're not going back to the size zero anymore. Hallelujah. In the midst of it, he's telling you that you ought to follow him, that you ought to do what it is. Pay attention to what he's asking you. Don't deflect it over to somebody else. Don't say it's the pastor's job or the deacon's job or the missionaries or, or the deaconess or the ushers or anybody else. It's your job to follow Jesus. It, it's your job to follow the commandments that he lays out. It, it's your job to look at uh, Matthew 25 and follow through with it. Visit the sick. Visit those in jail. Give those that are hungry food. Give those that are naked clothes. It's your job. Stop deflecting what it is that he wants you to do. P. Peter represents most of us uh, in this text. We find it easy to deflect any personal challenge from uh, Jesus by wondering and even worrying about what others are doing. P Peter deflects this and he puts it on uh, what about John? What, what about him? What, what is it that you want for him? My brothers and my sisters, I want to tell you today that if we're focused on Jesus, we don't have any time to be worrying about other people. My, my brothers and my sisters, that when you live the life according to his will, people will want to know why you're doing the things you're doing. And, and then you can shed on them because Jesus told me, to follow him. Or oh, listen, in the midst of it, when we get to the point in our life where we can't work for the Lord, then you might as well know that you're headed straight to hell. Uh, in the midst of it, Jesus is telling Peter, don't, don't get caught up about John. Don't, don't get yourself uh, confused about what it is that I want you to do. For, for each of us whom Jesus has called, our time will come to follow him. For each of us, there is a work or work for us to do. Our focus must stay on Jesus and his call to follow him. Oh yes, it doesn't matter where you are, you ought to follow him. Doesn't matter what day of the week is, that if he gets you up, he starts you on your way, you ought to follow Jesus. You ought not worry about who's going to go. Uh, the songwriter says, if you don't want to praise him, don't hinder me. If I'm doing the work, don't get mad because I'm doing it. Don't get mad. Don't get jealous because I'm doing his work and he's blessing me. Well, if you do his work, then he'll bless you as well. Yes, if there is something you want to do for another person, let me tell you today, keep them in your prayers. Every time you go on your knees and pray, 
Include those that you know and those that you don't even know. And then encourage them to follow Jesus. Uh, Jesus answers Peter with another challenge. Though Peter was destined at some point to die on the cross, uh, Jesus wanted Peter to consider the possibility that he might have a different plan for John. Yeah, let me tell you, it's one thing uh, to worry about yourself, but it's another thing to worry about another person. Let me tell you that, that God's got us all in the palm of his hand. Jesus bled, suffered, and died for all of us to have a right to the tree of life. And so my brothers and my sisters, whatever his plan is for somebody else, I want to tell you today that Jesus is going to make sure that he or that person follows through on their plan. Uh, Peter had to consider what Jesus wanted of him, uh, wanted Peter to consider uh, what it is and the knowing that Jesus might require something different from other people or other disciples. Yes, he requires uh, something different from you than he requires of me. But for every challenge he places in front of you or in front of me, he gives me the ability, he gives you the ability. All we got to do is to be able to follow him. Yes, the same power he gives you, he'll give it to me. Yes, just like I stand in front of you and I preach the gospel, I told you before that, that sometimes I stand behind the secret desk and, and I'm as nervous as can be. But when I follow Jesus, he opens up the way he clears my mind. He settles my heart. He takes my nervousness away and he leads me where he wants me to go. That's what I'm trying to tell you today, that, that if you just follow him, he'll take away your fears. He'll move away all of the anxiety if you keep your mind on Jesus. Peter had to decide for himself whether or not he would follow Jesus. This is a challenge for every one of Jesus' followers. My brothers and my sisters, there's a challenge on your life. Will you serve the Lord? Will you follow him? No matter what goes on in your life, will you do what he asks you to do? Your first and foremost thing is to set yourself straight with the Lord and follow him. Let me say it one more time. Set yourself straight with the Lord and follow him. Somebody said, well, how do I get myself straight? First, you must confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is Jesus Christ. He is our savior. He is the Messiah. And it is that you shall be saved. My brothers and my sisters, we're caught up in what's going on in the world, but we need to be more caught up on who controls the world. Well, we need to know that in the midst of it, that our problems seem big, but our God is bigger than any problem or any situation or anything that we'll ever face. He's able to do it. He's able to keep us. He's able to present us faultless. He's able to do all things exceedingly and abundantly well. I need to tell you today that we got to make up our minds that in the midst of it, I'm going to serve the Lord. I'm going to serve him with gladness. I'm going to sing. I'm going to praise. I'm going to work. I'm going to follow him until I see him for myself. Yes, my, my Aunt Alice uh, used to sing this song, and she probably still does. Uh, way out on the hill, uh, bound for Mount Zion. If anybody will make it, surely I will. Mm. And I want to tell you right now, that's the kind of determination that you need to have in your life. You need to be determined that no matter what it is, that you're going to be bound from Mount Zion and you're going to make it. You're going to do everything possible in your life. You're going to do everything that the Lord puts before you to do, that you're going to follow him and you're going to be of good courage. You're going to be of sound mind. You're going to do it and do it to his glory. Listen to me. The other thing is, 
we must be careful of not having ourselves, ourselves not right with the Lord. We're caught up with trying to get other people right. And the truth of the matter is, we ain't right ourselves. Let me say it one more time. Be careful about trying to get other people right. And we're not right ourselves with the Lord. You got to work to get yourself right with the Lord. You got to stay out of other people's business and you've got to be able to work on your own business. Because when people see you walking in the light, walking in the direction of Christ, walking and following the word of God, then they'll know that they can follow the same Jesus. They can follow the same God and he'll do what he did for you. He'll do it for them. Peter inquires about what Jesus said about John living until Jesus returns. And Jesus was uh, simply to say this, what if he does live until I come again? What is it to you? I, I want to stop right there because some of us are, are hypocrites. We criticize other people. Yes, some of us have been saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, set on fire, and yet we're criticizing other people who have not caught up to where we are. Truth of the matter is, all of us have been in that situation. I know there's somebody out there saying, oh, no, not me. The Bible says that we have sinned and we've fallen short of the glory of God. We were born into sin, shaped in iniquity. And my brothers and my sisters, we're no better than anybody else. But if we follow Jesus, if we do what Jesus commands us to do, then we can be and we can show others that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the light. Peter is concerned about this. What if he does live until I come again? What is it to you? What is it? That if somebody else is doing something and you don't know why they're doing it, what concern is it to you? Why do you get so caught up about somebody else's situation? Uh, it is that in the midst of it, we need to understand <clears throat> that some folks will choose silver and gold instead of choosing and following Jesus. Some folks... Uh, have messed up their lives and uh, they're messing it up right now. But it is that we need to realize that they have yet to follow Jesus. Yes, some folks have gotten blessings when they deserved none at all. And the truth of it is that one day they'll realize that it is that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And one day they'll realize that all of their blessings comes from the Lord. Yes, some folks have gotten grace and mercy when they should have been dead. But the truth of the matter is all of us got grace and mercy when we should have been dead. Mm. Oh, my brother and my sister, that God's plan and Jesus' sacrifice made for them was made for us too. Yes, we all fall into the realm of these things as well. We must steady our course and maintain our focus following Jesus. Peter was challenged to follow Jesus. And I'm challenging you today to follow Jesus in every way that you can follow Jesus. In every day that it gets you up, follow Jesus. Burdens may seem hard to bear, but if you follow Jesus, he'll take care of your burdens. Uh, he said, take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for my burdens are light. Friends may get few, uh, and uh, they may turn their back on you, but I heard him say he'll be a friend that sticks closer than any friend if you follow him. Yes, mother and father may forsake you, but the word says uh, that the Lord will take you up. If you follow Jesus, he'll be a mother for you. Now, 
and yes, he will. He'll be a father for you. You may be in the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, you may be walking through uh, and you don't know how you're going to make it through. But I heard David say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, I will not fear for the Lord is with me. Uh, if you follow Jesus, uh, he'll take you out to the cemetery. Uh, he'll take you down through the grave. Uh, and then at an appointed time, uh, he's going to make you rise uh, up again. Uh, you may be uh, in a situation, uh, but because uh, if you follow him, uh, where it is uh, that there is sadness, if you follow Jesus, uh, he'll bring happiness uh, into your life. Uh, if you follow Jesus, uh, there may be sorrow, uh, and it is, uh, if you follow Jesus, uh, he'll uh, give you joy unspeakable joy. Yes, if you follow Jesus uh, in the midst of it, uh, things may be uh, too much for you to understand. Uh, but if you follow Jesus, uh, he'll give you some understanding uh, that will surpass all understanding. Uh, I stop by to tell you today uh, that in the midst of our troubled uh, world that we live in, uh, follow Jesus. Uh, hold on to his unchanging hand. Uh, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, follow Jesus. Uh, wherever he leads you, he's leading you uh, from earth all the way to heaven. Uh, follow Jesus. Uh, follow what he tells you to do. Uh, follow his word. Uh, give him glory uh, and give him praise. Uh, follow Jesus. Uh, no matter what nobody else does, uh, follow Jesus. Uh, sometimes you're going to be down, uh, but follow Jesus. And sometimes uh, you're going to be up, uh, but follow Jesus. Uh, sometimes uh, your money's going to run low, uh, but follow Jesus. Uh, sometimes food won't be there for you, uh, but keep on following Jesus. Uh, sometimes uh, you may be down uh, and you think you're almost to the ground, uh, but follow Jesus. Uh, he will, he will, he will, he bless you. He'll open up a window uh, and pour out a blessing on you. Follow Jesus. Uh, don't worry about anybody else uh, because Jesus got them as well. Uh, put your mind uh, on Jesus. Uh, he's worthy uh, of your praise uh, and he's worthy uh, for you to follow him. Uh, I want to tell you today, uh, there's a lot of challenges out there, uh, but the best challenge I can give you today, uh, have I got a witness out there, uh, is to follow Jesus. Uh, he will will be with you every step of the way. He was there before you were born. He'll be there when you die. He'll be there on the resurrection of your life. He'll be there when you get to the gate. He'll be there and hear him say he'll be there and he's interceding and he's advocating. He'll be right there if you follow Jesus, uh, when you get to the gate, uh, it would be sad uh, that they turned you away. Uh, but if you follow Jesus, uh, you'll hear him say, uh, well done, uh, well done, uh, that good and uh, faithful servant. Uh, ain't God good? Uh, ain't he worthy uh, of your highest praise? Uh, I want to challenge you today. Uh, whoever hears this, uh, whoever looks at this, uh, I want to challenge you today uh, to make up your mind uh, to follow Jesus. Uh, I know the problems uh, and I know the situation, uh, but I'm challenging you today uh, to follow Jesus. Uh, don't let nothing uh, get in your way. Uh, follow Jesus. Uh, follow him uh, all the way. Uh, follow him uh, from earth to glory. Uh, follow him uh, and he will uh, bless you. God, today, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ for any man, any woman, any boy or girl that might hear this message right now, God, challenge them to follow you. Challenge them not to follow money, fame, or fortune, but to follow you. Challenge them today, Lord, 
not to follow the name of their church or their pastor or their officers or their position, but to follow you. Lord, challenge them today not to follow their family, but to follow you, that they may follow you and that through their life, they may become someone that others will look at and realize that in the midst of it, that it is you that they are following. We thank you and we praise you. We glorify you. We lift you up in the magnificent name of Jesus the Christ, we pray, and all that love the Lord, say amen. Amen. We thank God right now for each and every one of you as we go through and prepare for our announcement. Again, we want to be able to say to each of you, pray for those families that are going through the time of bereavement. We know that it is hard. We know that this virus is taking a toll on the world, not only of those that are dying, but mentally and physically. We know that it is causing anxiety. It is causing all sorts of problems. Let me say to you that unless you are in a real quarantine, let me explain. That means that somehow or another, you have come down with those symptoms of the virus. If you're just in your house and you're okay, then every day, just take a few minutes outside, walk through your neighborhood, go out into your backyard if you got it, just go outside, get some fresh air, talk to people. If in fact you are in need of any help, there are hotlines. If you go to the Pilgrim website, probably a month ago, I put on there a telemedicine uh, information that you can go. It's $20. You can call once you join. It's $20 a month. You join. You can call all of that stuff. I purposely put it on there because of this stuff that people are going through. As well, we want to pray for uh, Brianna and Josh Williams, Sister Bobby Williams. Uh, this week, they'll be funeralizing Brother Jay Williams, Brother Jay um, played drums for us for a long time, and we thank God for the midst of it. Again, let us be mindful one to another, and then I want to take the opportunity, again, uh, Brother Otis Applin, and I believe, I believe he is our most senior uh, statesman in our church, uh, celebrated a birthday last week. Again, we want to thank God for him. We want to thank God for all of you. We want to thank God that in the midst of it, that God is going to bless you. Know that God is going to bless you. He didn't bring you this far to leave you. He didn't put you in your situation, not to get you out of it, but you must follow Jesus. You must do everything possible there is. And then we probably missed in March and April but let me do it now while it's on my mind because sometimes I get behind the mic and I forget. Uh, let me just say happy birthday to all of you that were in March, those of you that were in April, and those of you that are in May. Again, we want to celebrate. And then all the mothers out there, again, it's a beautiful day. Celebrate it. Go outside. Do something. Just don't sit in there and soak about this. The Lord has given us this that we might glorify him and lift him up. And so we're thankful today. Again, um, let me just say to you, we're getting ready to go. Pray every day. Pray one for another. And a couple months ago, about six months ago, uh, this beloved brother and his uh, group choir came and celebrated with us. Uh, Pastor Alvin Darling pastors in Cranford, New Jersey, and Celebration Choir. And I just want to play this song as we go out. I hope uh, that it blesses you, and it is. The title of the song is A Blessings Coming Through. And I believe there's a blessing coming through for each of us. And as we go through, that we need to know that we are uh, preparing ourselves, that in the midst of it, that we should we should be able to know the Lord is going to bless us. Amen. We're going to play a few minutes of this as we go out. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day again.
Oh, me. 